Hi, in this video, we're gonna show you how distributive conditionals work in TypeScript as fast as possible. It's a complicated topic and you may have tripped up over it before. In fact, you may have tripped up over it without even knowing it. So let's just look at a concrete example and you'll see how it works. Take a look at non-generic union conditional here. This is a regular old type. It says string or number. So this is a union. So that's like its own little unit. String or number extends string. So it's a conditional. Does string or union extend string? If it does, we're going to be returning string. And if it doesn't, we're going to be returning the never type. In this case, you can see two slash is telling us here that it gives us never. Well, if we just took this little thing here, this first bit string or number, and we extracted that into a generic, we get this type distributive conditional. So we just took that part and we called it T, right? But what you're going to notice is that if you do exactly the same thing, you don't get the same answer. You get string now instead of never. So you see example one on line seven evaluates to string. It doesn't evaluate to the same thing as it does on line one, even though it looks like nothing really changed here. So the trick is just to jump to the end of the video. The trick is you can wrap this part, both sides of the extends in some value, like a tuple is the convenient one. And it's the one the TypeScript docs call out. But you wrap that stuff into one value and then the distributive conditionality thing goes away. And you see here that now example one evaluates to never. So we're going to get there, but let's just let's just understand this one. So Junk Song, help me out. What do we how do we make sense of all of this? I, I, I'm going to make example one here and we can kind of expand it and try to understand it. So what's the first thing the TypeScript compiler does in this situation? Yeah, this is a little bit of implicit tricky behavior, but it is actually useful. And uh, you can actually do the trick thing you just mentioned. So if you look at line 12, all that's really happening is that TypeScript takes distributed conditional, the generic type, mm -hmm. and applies it with string and with number. So with each member like, of the oh, union. Like individually. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to take string and number. So we have a union here, distributive conditional string, distributive conditional number. What do we do next? Yep. And uh, for example, if we had string or number or symbol uh, passed into T, then we would have mm -hmm. another line there. Uh, okay. So like distributive conditional symbol. Up here. If we had something there, it would be like that. So if however many members of the union you have, it's going to kind of like expand it out like that, right? Yes, exactly. So the distribution is happening over T, over the union T, mm -hmm. over each of its members. That's really okay. uh, all you need to remember. And from there on, it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is apply the distributed conditional type definition um, uh, okay. onto both lines. The magic of multi-cursor. Don't threaten me with a good time to use a uh, multi-cursor. <laughs> So did I do it right? So string extends string. And then that in that case, T was string. So we're going to pass in string mm -hmm. there. And then number extends string. The T was number. All right. So I think I can actually do this part. So string extends string is true. Those are the same thing. So we're going to get string for that part. Number extends string is false. So we're going to get never for that part. All right. What happens now? Never is the empty union. So uh, anything you add or never to, that's exactly like doing plus zero or union null set, if you remember that theory uh, from school. So that's from what's school, happening were, here. Did, were you a philosophy major? <laughs> uh, no, no, in, I don't know, high school, middle school, probably. Middle, middle school? You, you were doing set theory in middle school? Where was your middle school? Okay, for me in uh, here, I mean, usually we're trying to prop up Michigan on this channel, but I don't know. And uh, I grew up in rural Michigan and I definitely did not do set theory in middle school. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Okay, so it just evaluates to string then is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. Or never in general, you can just get rid of that or never. So I can say or never or never or yep. never. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Plus zero. All right. So. That makes sense, but I'm not really quite clear on how we didn't arrive at the same answer. So let's look at the trick. So I said in the beginning, we're going to be adding this tuple thing around it. And now we see that we get a different example. So I guess this would change now. It'd, it'd be non-distributive conditional. OK, and let's bring let's just copy pasta this guy down here. And what's different? So where, where do we go from here? Yeah, so the distributing behavior that we just saw, that only happens when, if you look at line four, we have T extends string. Mm -hmm. This time we've wrapped those with, uh, wrapped both sides with tuples. But before we had T, which was a union. So if the thing on the left of extends in a conditional, if that is a union, that's when you get distributive behavior. But now mm. the okay. thing to the left of extends is 
a tuple. So you can wrap a union in a tuple or an object or a function and remove or turn off the distributing behavior. So this time, oh, and that's useful okay. when so, you want to just compare T to string. So, so we're going to skip the first step. We're not going to be expanding this out. We're going to say extend string. And then I guess we're not going to have... We're not going to have the tuple on the other side because it's not there in our source code. And then we just do it like this. Uh huh. Yep. So as you can see, it's a completely different type, which is why it evaluates to a completely different result. The thing we had before was distributed conditional string or distributed conditional number. Mm -hmm. And this is clearly completely different from that, which is, yeah, where the behavior. Okay. And this from. evaluates to false. Mm -hmm. So that's why, so, you know, string or number in a tuple does not extend just string. They're different. So that's why we get, we oh, just get never. There's one, one step before that. This thing mm, okay. gets, TypeScript uh, removes the tuples there. Oh, okay. Effectively. So even if so, we yeah, had that's that. that's how that gets ah. evaluated. Okay. So then, then, right. And that's the same as line one, exactly the same as line mm -hmm. one, character for character. Yeah. Oh, well, not this part, I suppose, but okay. Yeah. Same, same innards. And then it's false. So then we get never. Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is when there's a union passed in as a generic parameter, TypeScript is going to sort of iterate over the things in that union. It's going to split out the union first and then give you a back a union, possibly. In our case, one of the union members was never, so that's why we just got back string in the first case. But it'll give you back a union in some cases. But to avoid that, you can turn off that distributivity by wrapping your values in, a, in an array. Does it work with, like, is there some other way you can do this other than arrays, or is this, like, the, the only way? So, yeah, two things. The, yeah, you can uh, wrap t, nest t in anything. It could be a tuple, it could be an object, it could be a function. Well, not mm -hmm. anything, but anything that can take T. Okay. And yeah, trigger this behavior. But another thing is that this doesn't always work just because T is a union and is being passed into a generic type. T needs to be the thing on the left side, left hand side of the conditional. And it needs to be a union. Okay. So yeah, it's not the it's T's position on the left hand side of line four that triggers the distributing behavior. It's a T's mm -hmm. position on the right-hand side right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. All right. Well, good to know. For anybody curious, like I said, we're doing this as fast as possible. We were just going to kind of broach this topic. There's a lot more to talk about. The effects of distributivity. T extends never. What that does. Never itself is a concept that we need to talk about. So we have a lot of plans for this channel doing these theory crafting videos. If you have questions, we're taking <laughs> we're taking questions from the audience. So if you have a question about something like this, advanced TypeScript stuff, and you'd like to understand it better, please let us know. And we're going to be making videos on these things. Thanks for stopping by, Junksan. Thanks for having me. Thank you.